Hey guys, and I do mean guys, because today we're gonna look at a TikTok account that uses math to explain women. And while it's tempting to dismiss this account as just another routine TikTok misogynist, because he's so committed to charts, math, and something that looks like science, he almost figures out why young men are struggling with women. But before he was getting millions of views on TikTok, thousands of subscribers on YouTube, and 45K a year on Patreon, he started his career less than a year ago by stitching this woman. Men with no hoops. Where are you? So the men with hoops huh? are up here uh, receiving all of the attention from the hoops, including you. And the men without hoops are down here trying to contact you on Bumble and not receiving an answer. Hope that helps. This video was cross posted to Reddit eight months ago and it was my first introduction to Mr. Math. The discussion was kind of split, but most agreed that he sounded like an incel. But the comment that stuck out the most from this thread was this one. Aren't you all taking this too seriously? Is this video not for comedic purposes? Ladies and gentlemen, he was not joking. A at least now we've got an answer to her question. Men with no hoops. Where are you? Um, yeah, officer, I've got one right here. And if for some reason that video didn't convince you he's an incel with no women, just wait until you hear how he refers to a woman with big boobs. I have a friend who is very materially blessed in female regions. Ew! I can't get over what kind of person would be comfortable scripting, saying, editing, and then publishing themselves saying female regions. Just say she has mild back pain and stares are her mortal enemy. Also, as a PSA to all men, please stop saying the word female. It causes every woman within 10 miles of you to dry up in their female regions. In case you're not terminally online, this word has a really bad reputation. I hate when female is the only grammatically correct term for women in a sentence because I literally feel like an incel. My female manager is shorter than my manager who is a woman, but at what cost? My girl boss. Well, now I know it could be worse. But why would this person feel like an incel just for saying female? Well, here's a set of things that are female. Dogs, cats, boats, connectors, plants, and of course, girls. Talk about girls. Talk about girls. Female could refer to any of these things, but woman only refers to one, the human one. The reason that incels are so in love with this word is because it denies women equal personhood. As the quote mentions, sometimes this word's unavoidable. But the real red flag that the speaker is an incel is they'll go out of their way to use this word instead of this one. So if you're ever in a situation where you need to communicate this idea, use literally any other term and you're golden. And one day she went to the bar and the female bartender kicked her out for no apparent reason. And the real reason was jealousy. The bartender, she knows that her tips for the day are gonna come from male attention. And when a better magnet for male attention enters the room, she now is threatened. This is the first hint we're gonna get that Mr. Math is gonna come so close to identifying a real phenomena only for his analysis to get derailed by his hatred of women. Maybe people in the service industry shouldn't be placed in a transactional scenario where their pay is determined by the attention of their customers instead of their contractual employer that has its origins in slavery. Seriously, look it up. But instead of analyzing the real problem here, this dude just comes to the conclusion that women are shallow. We hate women. We hate women. Something he neglects to examine in this video is whether it's unjustified that she got kicked out because of jealousy or a logical decision because men are shallow. This video is intended to be a dig at women, but it's really a dig at men. It's insane to think we'd get distracted from whatever we're doing just because there's a better magnet for male attention. Oh my God, it's the Roman Empire. Um, I got distracted by a better magnet for male attention. What were we talking about? Female regions. Actually, the most unrealistic part of this video was this. I have a friend. We all know this man has never seen a woman, much less been friends with one, because he thinks the government is giving them money for being women. 
Where are the men with the money that you speak of? Uh, you got rid of them, remember? You, you said it wasn't fair that men made more money, and so you insisted on uh, an equal pay, and you asked for uh, jobs and school and money to be distributed um, towards you. You wanted equality, and you got it, but you still made less money, so you had the government fix it. So now that things are equal, men are not good for anything, so you don't need men anymore, except for taxes. Now that assertion was kind of far-fetched and a little difficult to believe, so I, I got the entire tax code here, and I looked through it, and believe it or not, there's nothing in here about taxing you for your penis. But I mean, it's not like this guy would have the biggest bill for that. I mean, has any woman ever experienced this from the government? This right here. And also, don't think I let him get away with this one. You wanted equality and you got it. So these equal rights, um, are they in the room with us right now? Even with that pair of dent headed takes in the running, let me show you the dumbest thing from that video. This, the trophy moving from men to women. This man cannot comprehend that women can accomplish things, which is especially crazy if you've taken like one history class. You'd know that most often, this trophy is moving the other way. In school, girls got bonuses and I did not. And when I looked for work, girls got bonuses and I did not. And then in the dating world, girls got bonuses and I did not. It sounds like you wanted equal rights, no obstacles between you and success. And when you got it, you still weren't making the same amount of money. And you didn't like that, so you had the government write a bunch of laws to preferentially put you in college and employment. This whole situation is like having my car towed and then saying, why are you late? but I guess pointing that out makes me a dangerous failure. I mean, yeah, I, I would call you a dangerous failure. Look at how much time you spent seething because you couldn't buy Pokimane's cookies. Like if you're a broke boy, just say so. <laughs> My best guess as to what he's talking about here is a series of equal protection laws that stopped private corporations and public institutions from explicitly barring entrance to women. But the government is all of us collectively deciding to remove obstacles between women and capital empowerment. Removing obstacles between women and their goals isn't equivalent to gifting wins to them. Well, unless you're Tanya Harding. Speaking of feminism, what do you think of when you hear this sentence? Guys, I went on a date this week and I felt the feminism leaving my body. The story she told in this video was about a guy who paid for her drinks on a date. So with that context, do you think this phrase was A, clearly a joke, or B, there is no B, it's clearly a joke, which is something that's completely obvious to you. Unless you're Mr. Math. Did you hear that? Following this chart can help you banish feminism. Let's find out how. Listen, buddy, there's only one way for feminism to exit a woman's body, and it's not one good date. It's writing Harry Potter. I mean, it's not like guys who think that feminism can leave a woman's body have any idea of what it is. Mr. Math, for the million dollars, the floor is yours. Define this word for us, please. She was interested in feminism, which says that anyone can be anything, anywhere, at any time, as long as you feel like it's true, and facts are evil. Ooh, that is so embarrassing for him. He got feminism confused with Zootopia. I do that all the time. I guess him struggling to understand difficult concepts shouldn't be the biggest surprise because he recently took a sponsor on his YouTube channel that simplifies math, science, books, and culture into a couple easily understood bullet points, which like you might doubt that's real, but I didn't make that up. I couldn't make that up. That's the funniest fucking joke in the whole video and I didn't even write it. Men who don't go down on women are gay. And that's all I have to say. This is kind of a telling on yourself moment, oops, because personally, my my use of this particular practice, it ends pretty much about here. Bring it in, homie. Uh, bring, bring it in. Do, do you, do you like women? I mean, I would say this is the cringiest shit I've ever heard, but I've already heard this man say female regions. Every time this man talks about anything relatively involved with a woman's body, he sounds like Brandon from Easy A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Relax. Are you are you really that repulsed by lady parts? What do you think I have down there? A gnome? 
I am once again begging straight men on dating apps to describe what they have to offer. So I have a new car, it's a year old. I play guitar, I'm pretty good at it. I'm doing great on social media, here's my TikTok. I'm starting a life coaching practice because I'm great at emotional communication. I'm, I'm just imagining what this suit therapist would, would act like reacting to that one. Great at emotional communication. Maybe not great at self-assessment. Of course, I'm just kidding, that's not real. Uh, he's clearly never been to therapy. However, there's definitely been a lot of emotional communication from these videos because I can tell he's having some trouble with his female regions. Oh, it's good every time. <laughs> I lift weights. Never mind, he could totally take me. Cut, cut the VOD, cut the VOD. I thought there was something weird about that video. That's an odd sentence to just drop on the talk. So I found out what she really had to say. I am once again begging straight men on dating apps to describe what they have to offer rather than detailing the precise make and model woman they'd like to receive. She was upset that she kept reading bios like this and felt objectified. Mr. Math saw this video, then described what he had to offer and succeeded that with a list of his own requirements as if it was some sort of gotcha. So the woman I'm looking for doesn't use her huh? voice when she's angry. Not figuring out what she was really talking about is the biggest unforced nice guy self own I've ever seen in my entire life. These girls are saying nice guys don't finish last, they just win later. Here's a timeline, zero to 60. This orange part is where all the winning takes place. These women are saying that nice guys win at this point in life, and that is because they are snakes. Eve ate the apple in the garden, and she deceived Adam, and so did he eat. And now he's decided to translate the Bible from English to incel. I'm sure there's all new stories like Noah's archaic understanding of women, Cain and unable to get a girlfriend, the story of Job, Anyway, he was yapping. Nice guys win when they get good girls young and keep them. Keep them where? In their basement? <laughs> I can't believe I didn't notice this until editing, but but that line starts before 18. After that, it's just picking up the pieces, women until about 35 and men until about 45. And when these lines end, it's just game over. It's, it's musical chairs. If you don't have somebody by here, you're out. Sorry, ladies, Brad Pitt is out. Actually, that might be a good thing. I'm gonna need the short girls to start dating the short kings. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! I must say, as representative of the short king delegation, we are honored to accept this invitation. But before we do, let's check in with Mr. Math and see what the short pawn delegation has to say. Well, that's not gonna happen. Women do not want men who are taller than themselves. They want men who are taller than other men. It would be nice if people would spontaneously match up according to their value, but they don't do that unless you make them. He actually has a girlfriend, or at least someone pretending to be his girlfriend, and in a video they did together, they both basically said that they wanted to do better but they're matched up because they know their value. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Like people are Pokemon with, with base stat totals. And if you thought all of that was bad, wait until you see how this video ends. Why would an average woman settle for an average man when she could throw herself at an athlete and baby trap him? Well, there it is. And indeed, there it is. I've been avoiding it so far, but at this point, it's very evident. This man has a very deep-seated hatred towards women. To him, women are simultaneously not able to understand even the most basic thing and need it explained to them, but are also conniving succubi whose only mission in life is to extract seed from a high-value man. And this is where his long-form content on YouTube really comes in. It's what you've already seen with the charts, but Crank it up to 11. This is the standard female delusion chart. It is a tool for bringing balance back to the dating market. The standard female delusion chart can go a long way towards correcting female ridiculousness. I did my best and tried to find the data to back this phenomenon up. So basically like six Google searches followed by Reddit. But then I realized that he showed the previous version of this chart, which said that the data came from OkCupid. I don't know who needs to hear this, but dating apps? aren't real. I did find this though. 
quite insightful. I think the thing I dislike most about this chart is that it implies that men can't develop an attraction towards someone that they regularly interact with. And he would know this was bullshit if he had any female friends or went outside. I mean, you don't even have to do that. That's why with, with anime, most anime characters are pretty. They're drawn to be pretty. They're all pretty. If pretty was the only thing that mattered to us men, our opinion on them would be universal. But guys can all watch the same shows and then simp for different female characters. By the way, we stand Ryu on this channel. Attraction is too complex to fit on a stupid graph and I don't feel the need to further explain that. He does though. The women will talk endlessly about little details about men's bodies. I had a woman tell me recently that my shoulder muscles attached to my shoulders in a way that was sexy. Who even thinks of that? They do. And I've witnessed this. I'll be talking to my girlfriends, put a space there. I'll be talking to my girlfriends about their crushes and they'll literally make up physical features about the person they're crushing on to make them more attracted to him. Yeah, he's got such strong forearms. Okay, that one's easy. Do more pull-ups. And he always wears this super cute vest. Sense of style is important. And he's got this cute, like, crooked smile. And he's got these, like, big old ears. They're adorable. And meanwhile, this is the guy she's crushing on. Women will like a literal ogre who's nice to them that makes them laugh. I don't understand how he uses this chart as such a negative thing when shouldn't this give us dudes hope? It's almost like if you get to know women, like away from the internet, they might be actually attracted to you. What what are women attracted to anyway? This is an Elon Musk, Andrew Tate type situation. He has a lot of money and power, and so he doesn't have to put in much effort. That's it. Men do not understand what makes men attractive. Like, yeah, I've seen this video breaking down what makes Henry Cavill attractive, but like, obviously. But literally, women are out here thirsting over Pete Davidson. Like, like as, as a man, I don't, I don't get it. I've seen hundreds of thirst traps about Pete Davidson. Like, why? And honestly, from having talked to women, I think Andrew Tate might be the rare example of a zero. And that's not because he's bald or because he doesn't have enough money or because his face is weird. It's because the ugly is calling from inside the house. Literally the only people that are rushing to suck these guys off are in the replies to their tweets. Meanwhile, if you ask an actual woman to tell you what they're attracted to, they'll probably tell you something like this. One time, my ex-boyfriend was shopping for Magic the Gathering cards, and he told me, I used to be too embarrassed to do this nerdy stuff in public, but I feel like people could see me do anything with you next to me, and I'd feel cocky about it. It was the hottest thing anyone ever said to me, and he said it with a hand full of Eldrazi boosters. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. So people don't have a value. They have a perceived value, and everyone perceives it differently, and how attractive you are is the average of how you are perceived. I want you guys to notice something very important about the graph he drew for this one. If you look right here, there's small details, subtle. You might have missed it. Um, but if you look really close, you will see that he's bald. Got it! And finally, a reminder that not everyone has the same opinion. I've gotten this from up here, and I have gotten this from down here. It's almost as if people are complex and we're all attracted to different things. I mean, do you hear the disdain in his voice when he says, I have gotten this from down here. Like he's entitled. He likes to act like you should just find your value, and then spend it like some sort of currency. This is what I think we should all be shooting for, perfect 50-50. So assuming standard female delusion, once you know your score, just use this equalize chart to find your match. Good to know that crypto bros will soon have another kind of valueless shitcoin. But you can increase the value of that currency by self-maximizing, which is his term for self-improvement. Unless you're a girl. 
curls can't self-maximize. For women, unfortunately, self-maximizing is a lot harder because there just isn't as much you can do. Basically, none of this stuff gives you any points, which is why feminism is stupid. Self-maximizing is for the boys, and you couldn't understand it if you're a girl. Just like the comedic genius that is Matt Wright. My, my comedy is so much more for guys. Mr. Math says women can't improve because they're a thing of defined value. Men have a currency and they can earn more of it, but a woman's value is just her sticker price. This is why he's so mad that women call each other tens. It's because when they tell each other that there's someone out there who will recognize them for their beauty, he sees that as currency manipulation. Because according to him, a woman's greatest asset is her looks. So a big thing women need to understand is men can make up for looks with effort. Women usually cannot. Well, my counterexample to this was a joke. I mean, you're never going to catch me simping on Maine. I quarantine my simping activities to an alternate account in Alinity's Twitch chat. Uh, men absolutely can develop attraction towards a woman that has these traits that He's labeled as exclusively masculine. The fact that he thinks a woman with these traits isn't more attractive to men really means that a woman with these traits isn't more attractive to him. How would you phrase this? You know, when someone says something on social media that says more about them than the thing they're trying to talk about. This is kind of a telling on yourself moment. Oops. The last time I saw someone self-report this hard, XQC was still playing Among Us. I don't know how he decided which words went into which boxes. Confidence is literally the second most attractive trait a woman can have. The first, of course, being abs. What were we talking about again? Uh, sorry, I, I got distracted by a better magnet for male attention. Oh, gotta take this. Really? A apparently, he's about to give out some really good advice. All of these things can create good conditions in your life. And that's what she wants to see. She wants to see, can you create good conditions in your own life and then share them with me? That's the perfect relationship. Drop the mic. Stop talking. Throw out all the charts, Sherlock. You crack the case. Make yourself a happy life and then find someone else to share it with. God damn home run. I can't believe I'm saying this, but but walk it off, cue the celebration, let's start the parade. Oh, oh my God, there's eight minutes left in the video. Please stop, stop talking, please, please, you please, please, You are in please, the please. friend zone, it means you're fulfilling. You put in a pathetic amount of effort, I'm weak and you need to help me. Light and dark forms of confidence. Women get confused. But he couldn't leave it there because fundamentally, he's a nice guy no space there. He is a nice guy who wants to flatten down preferences and feelings and society into simple charts so he can stitch women and mansplain their feelings to them. And this is why the charts keep changing. People are infinitely complex and you cannot turn it into a chart. And so it's funny for him to create <laughs> a V1 of the chart and go, no, 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 that doesn't represent the complexities of human relationships. V2, <laughs> instead, of, instead that. of going, I cannot get this all into one chart. I, it's simply the chart is not detailed <laughs> enough. This hasn't stopped him from selling his charts for $3 a piece. And they tried to tell me artists were struggling in this economy. What do you think, fellas? Is it like an NFT because I can screenshot it? Or is it like an NFT because it's completely fucking worthless? This is my ape. It reminded me of me a little bit because I wear striped shirts. So what's the solution to Mr. Math? Well, if you've been around here before, you know that I'm a big fan of deplatforming toxic people. Having a platform is such an honor, and believe me, I don't take the little success I've gotten so far for granted. Thank you for all of the sub milestones I've missed. It is a surreal privilege that I can wake up in the middle of the night and see that 500 people are listening to what I have to say at 2 a.m. And that privilege is not something that Mr. Math deserves. Something I've deliberately not told you yet is how Mr. Math chooses which women to stitch. He doesn't find them himself. I mean, you probably figured that out because his for you page looks like this, but the process of a Mr. Math video begins with a woman saying something on the internet. Then his weird fans add him in the comments, 
Then he appears to terrorize the woman after his name is called like an incel version of Beetlejuice. And finally, he links their profile from his video so his angry fans can go to her page and dogpile her. I mean, just for that simple and repeatedly observable process, Mr. Math has broken terms of service and should get banned. But unfortunately, Mr. Math is the symptom and not the cancer. There's an unending supply of men on the internet who hate women enough to post about it in forums, watch an insane amount of TikToks, and eight hour long podcasts regurgitating the same points about how women are worse. Like the majority of their day is dedicated to this shit. And, and is, is that more or less embarrassing than being in love with an anime woman? Uh, I'm not asking for a friend, I I'm asking for me. Men are struggling right now and we could talk about why, but instead, I'd like to talk about what to do about it. And Nash Greer. This is extremely relevant, I, I promise. Over a decade ago, Nash Greer and his two dumbass friends made this video. I'll let them introduce it. Today, we're going to talk about girls. Talk about girls. Talk about girls. Uh, we're going to talk about, we're talking about yeah. what we find attractive in girls. In girls. Uh, so and that groan you just heard will be the only moment for pause or self-reflection in the entire video. This is the face of a man who knows what he's about to do is wrong, but is going to do it anyways. And this caused quite the stir when it first came out. It was probably the first time the YouTube ecosystem fully came together to try to eat someone alive. And was it justified? Yeah. So I took notes on everything they said in the video. Here are the things they said made a girl attractive. Some of the things they said were kind of benign. Some were really harmful, but most were just slightly objectionable. I mean, is it wrong to have preferences? Not at all. But when you look at all of this together, it reads like America Ferrera's monologue in Barbie. They want a girl that can give them hints, but isn't easy. She's good at video games, but not obsessed, and certainly not better than him. She'll text him first, but not too much because then she's desperate. She's independent, but entertains you. She's innocent, but intimate. She's outgoing, but not loud. She's got a short skirt, but a long jacket. Honestly, being a woman seems like playing societal Flappy Bird. While a lot of creators made videos on this at the time, the one that still sticks with me is this one by Savannah Brown. It's a slam poem about the pressure she feels to conform to the standard of the perfect patriarchal woman. It's powerful and angry and emotional and vulnerable. And in the real world, so much happens that you'll never graph. For instance, even though women have legal equality on paper, hello, asterisk, implicit sexism still remains. Remember this one from earlier in the video? It sounds like you wanted equal rights, and when you got it... Yeah, you thought I'd let that slide with one quip, didn't you? Sure, there are equal protection clauses and laws, but women still don't have equal pay and constantly worry about their safety and don't have full autonomy over their body, and I'm told there's an ugly dude going around that harasses them for sharing their feelings on TikTok. You could point at a graph of how many cents women make compared to men and talk about how different choices lead to that until the cows come home. It's much harder to dismiss the story of someone who wanted to be a doctor until their male college advisor told them that their skill set was more aligned with nursing. That's why Savannah's video was so persuasive. She didn't pull out data or science or charts. She saw a video of men online not understanding the femme experience, and then she made an emotionally intelligent response about how it feels to be a woman. Misunderstandings between the genders are inevitable. Hurt feelings are inevitable. Blind spots are inevitable. We all have them. While there are a lot of videos online of women not understanding the male experience that pressure to be the perfect patriarchal man, I have never seen an emotionally vulnerable response video about how it feels to be a man. I've seen a lot of cold and angry ones though. No one deserves the harassment that a stitch from Mr. Math summons. However, I will concede that a tiny fraction of the women he stitches, whom I did not show in the video, they've re received enough hate, but a tiny fraction are repeating the expectations of the patriarchy. And they got stitched because what they said hurt a lot of guys' feelings. And I, I didn't say that with a mocking tone for a reason. Those hurt feelings are valid. But if you're trying to convince people to change problematic behavior, Responses like this one are productive, and responses like this one are not. And uh, 
most other channels would end the video there. But I want the full answer. So we're going to go a little deeper into the expectations placed on men and how the world's biggest crybaby has amassed an audience of millions. So this entire video, I've been making jokes about Mr. Math that were purposely designed to be unfair to him to see if you would notice. So I said he has um, no bitches, implied he's balding and short. I said almost directly that he has a vagina. I uh, implied he's ugly and then called his penis small. I implied he was gay. Then I implied he was broke. And I literally just called him a crybaby. These are all expectations placed upon men that they're forced to conform to if they want to exist under the patriarchy. But once you detach yourself from the patriarchal ideal, these things don't really affect you anymore. This is a true story. Since my alt-right platforms video left the intended audience and got picked up by the alt-right algorithm, I've been getting comments like this. Peter Cook deducted, opinion rejected. <laughs> ah! <laughs> First of all, bars. I read this and it's like, oh my God, you think I have a wife? That's so sweet. Like how many dimensions does she have? But I guess I'd have to reject the label because it's already Sneeko's job title. Did you catch that one? They're easy to miss, right? Quite honestly, I think hate comments like this one are really, really funny. I send them to my friends and we laugh at them because they have no effect on me. Patriarchal expectations did untold damage to my childhood. But eventually, I grew up and realized that I don't care that I'm not exactly what other people think a man should be. Yes, I am a nerdy, teenage-looking, short, lightweight virgin with delusions of grandeur. I know what I am, and I wear it like armor. It can never be used to hurt me. As a great philosopher once said, I'm me, I do me, and I chill. Hashtag what up, though. <laughs> Legendary tweet. Fucking legendary. <laughs> Hashtag what up, though? <laughs> this is the trick of the patriarchy. Here's a model of it that Mr. Math drew out. It's easy to see yourself as a man at the top and assume that a system like this would benefit you. And it's undeniable that it does. It does. It just does. Like, you know, sometimes, thanks, patriarchy. But when men embrace this system, they have to spend a lot of time and effort ensuring their position at the top of the pyramid. I've realized now that rank number one isn't an achievement, it's a prison which forces you to dedicate your life to defending a temporary title. If you want more information on this, I've attached an essay by Bell Hooks, lowercase, called Understanding Patriarchy, that details the struggles of men under a system that seems like it should benefit them. Armed with the knowledge that the real problem is the patriarchy? Let's re-examine this gem from earlier in the video. Women do not want men who are taller than themselves. They want men who are taller than other men. The way he phrased this comparison is rooted in the way we teach young boys to perform patriarchy. You're faster than him. You're taller than him. You're stronger than him. You're funnier than him. That's why this bit resonated with his audience. They want men who are taller than other men. They're so used to comparing themselves to other men and finding themselves wanting that they assume all women are doing it too. This is why they're so angry at Chad's. It's not because they've got a better life, even though they do. It's because their existence alone is enough to make them feel inferior. The way to stop this endless comparison isn't to get mad at women. It's to get mad at the patriarchy. But he's right about one thing. There has never been a time in human history where the patriarchy has been weaker. This is why he says female. This is why he hates feminism. This is why he insists on turning people into numbers. It's a desperate attempt to restore the patriarchy to its former glory. These kind of hierarchies are essential in the conservative dogma, and any disruption to them isn't perceived by conservatives as someone looking to dismantle them. It's someone looking to invert them. This is why when I say I care about minorities, they hear I hate white people. Conservatives like the ones that Mr. Math entertains miss the rigid hierarchy. They know that it's being deconstructed. They know they don't automatically get a wife anymore. They know that women can now look for a partner and not an owner. And that makes them 
very mad because in their mind, the hierarchy should be alive and well because that's just how things are supposed to be. They see women moving up to their level as threatening. To them, if women move up, where else is there for them to go other than down? And as we learned earlier in the video, going down is not something they wanna do. This stupid hierarchy is why he thinks he can graph out people's value. And when people don't agree with his assessment, it makes him really mad because it proves his system is flawed. It would be nice if people would spontaneously match up according to their value, but they don't do that unless you make them. You also thought I was gonna let him get away with that too, didn't you? If they don't pair up like this unless you make them, it's because dating is more than just a comparison of looks and stats. You're not making a fantasy football trade. You're finding a life partner. Personally, I'm glad we live in the real world rather than the cynical one Mr. Math illustrates. He can draw charts hating women for as long as he wants, but he'll never be able to graph the most important part of dating. Love. <laughs> Throughout the production of this video, I've felt a lot of different ways about Mr. Math. He's made me feel depressed and upset and confused and angry. But now that I've got a complete understanding of him, I feel one way towards him. Pity. I pity him. A frail, insecure man trying so desperately to make everyone else as miserable as he is. If the comments on my alt-right platforms video are anything to go off of, Mr. Mass fans are still here white hot with rage, trying to formulate the best angry comment. But before you losers hit send, I'd like to read you a quote from Lyndon B. Johnson. If you can convince the lowest white man that he's better than the best black man, he won't notice you're picking his pocket. Hell, give him someone to look down on and he'll empty his pockets for you. People like Mr. Math are trying to convince you that you're better than women. Stop falling for it. And while the rest of us wait for Mr. Math to get banned, fall off, or go to therapy, you should explore the exact opposite way to profit off of miserable men who can't get a girlfriend. The companion video to this one is about a girl who makes, let's call it, independent content and then promotes it using TikTok. Think Mr. Beast, but instead of selling chocolate, she's selling spicy noodles. By watching it, not only are you in for a good time, you're gonna piss off Mr. Math. He hates it when women make money.